Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NBA slate for this evening. Bobby's uh, throat is feeling a little under the weather, so I'm doing this solo, uh, but feel free to join us at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Bobby is uh, feeling better. He'll be joining me. Otherwise, I'll just be going live myself at 6 o'clock tonight. Um, hope everybody had a good weekend. You know, I'm going to go through uh, game by game, kind of, again, uh, the early look based on my projections as of you know, early in the day, let's put it that way. Um, I, I do think it is kind of important to at least get a sense for what could happen, right? Um, or what should happen until all the news comes kind of piling in as, as the day goes on. Um, it's uh, an interesting slate. There's already some injury news that's kind of in there. And uh, we'll just see, uh, we'll see where, where it takes us. So uh, first uh First game is Atlanta against Cleveland. And the first thing I would like to say is I think Cleveland's a very good bet here at minus one and a half, but uh, that's something different. Uh, I'm not really getting too much. Well, I shouldn't say that. So we have Jared Allen. Um, he looks kind of decent at center at 6,700. Uh, not bad. Um, also on Cleveland, Donovan Mitchell in 9,100, I guess seems okay. Aside from that, not a, not too much going on on the Cleveland side. And I have them ranked kind of okay. So, all right, I'll put Jarek Allen and Donovan Mitchell kind of in the player pool. But nothing's really, really standing out. And on the other side, Atlanta, I mean, you could certainly play Trey Young or DeJounte Murray, but I just have a feeling that um you're gonna want to pay up uh for uh, for for kind of more like Tatum, Curry, Shea, and things like that. Um and I think that Trey is gonna be kind of left uh uh kind of on the outside looking in. On the other hand, I mean he is gonna be much lower owned than the guys I just mentioned. So uh the usual the usual push and pull between those studs. I mean, how much ownership do you want to trade for a better projection? So I think I will keep Trey on the list, but overall, nothing too exciting from this game. So again, just to kind of <laughs> summarize the usual guys, uh, Jared Allen, Donovan Mitchell, uh, they look okay. Uh, and on Atlanta, DeJounte Murray and Trey Young just look okay, but nothing that great. And moving on here, we have Orlando against Indiana. Um the early look, I guess Jalen Smith would be the best option for Indiana. Um, Price-wise, nothing is really standing out all that much here. So let's 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 do this again. Let's let's do what we usually do. Let's start putting guys in that we talked about, and then we will kind of slowly but surely remove them as better plays kind of come to light. So let's put these guys in from before. So it was Mitchell, and who else from Cleveland? Is that pretty much it? Or did we say Garland was possible? Okay, and we'll put in Jalen Smith for now. And then who else from Indiana looks good? Um, not a lot. Uh, I don't have anybody really, except for Jalen Smith, as much play, as, as very playable on this side of the ball. All right, Orlando, uh, as usual, Watch for Wendell Carter. Um, let's see the right now it says he didn't participate in shoot around. It will be a game time decision, which is obviously always annoying, but it is an early game, so we'll get that news uh in due time and with plenty of time, hopefully, to get your lineups in. And it won't impact the rest of the slate too much. Uh if in fact he is out, I imagine that. Uh, Mo Bamba will be a better play, although he did get a significant price increase from where he was the other day at 4,300 to now 5,800. Um, so we'll just have to rerun projections and see where that uh, what that looks like. If in fact he is out, if he's in, very very fringy play, if if at all. Um, so pretty much nobody on the Orlando side. So overall, just Jalen Smith, and pretty much nobody else. So you see, like, in these first two games, who are sort of on an island from these others, there's really no need 
to plow much into these first two games. I mean, nobody's that great of a play, and it removes the optionality available to you if you save your your slots for later, uh, NBA being a late swap sport. Okay, uh, Boston against Chicago. Uh, Jason Tatum is actually one of the aforementioned studs that you might want to consider paying up for. Um, it looks decent. I have him rated as kind of the third best overall play. Um, and his ownership is relatively tame at 14%. So I guess it's, uh, I guess it's reasonable. It seems a little dirty to play him at 10, six, but, uh, this is what you, this is what you're getting from him now. So, uh, I think it's, I think it's reasonable. Um, and he's one of the top one, two, three, four plays. I have him rate, rated third. And in fairness, I don't have that much of a discrepancy between one, two, three, four. So let's keep Tatum in. Let's see uh, anybody, any value coming out of Boston? No, not really. So it's just going to be Tatum for me and, and nobody else. And on the Chicago side, not a lot. I mean, there's, there's not a, I mean, the pricing in this whole slate is a little, uh, is kind of tight, but we'll get to some better plays in a little bit, I suppose. But Zach Levine, I suppose, is the best of the Chicago guys, but not even enough for me to, put him in here actually you know i do think he's probably is he better than Dejounte murray on this slate i know they're different prices but uh, let's put him in instead of Dejounte murray and again i don't think that anybody on this board right now is particularly great i'd actually be surprised if at the end of the day in my big buy-in i'd have anybody on this board in my lineup maybe tatum but i just don't think that any of these guys are going to get there. Jalen Smith, perhaps. We'll we'll get to it. We'll get to it. All right. So so the big uh, the big game on today's slate with respect to oh, to uh, you know the value and pace and ownership and all that stuff is going to be the OKC uh, Knicks game. Um, one bit of news that uh, we are waiting on is the availability or lack thereof of Cam Reddish. Um, so he didn't suit up for Sunday's game. And he's been playing a full 30 minutes plus pretty much every game. And the interesting news is that Quentin Grimes came in for him. So if Quentin Grimes takes, if Cam Reddish is in fact out and Quentin Grimes takes his starting spot at 3K, um, that's going to be kind of a staple of all kind of cash lineups. And it's going to be a kind of a difficult fade, I believe, in tournaments. Uh, he had th played 32 minutes the other day. Um, he did get the start and this is, this is just this is what happens when you're three K and play 32 minutes, you usually score about 30 fantasy points. So, um, let's certainly move him in as the top play so far, but this whole game, as you'll see, is going to be really, really good because both teams don't play a lot of defense and you're going to get some really good projections all over the place. Let, let's stick with the. New York side for a second. Um, Emmanuel quickly at 4,500 is going to rate to be a good play, even though coming off the bench. But you, you certainly see like a lot of variations where he'll close over Gwent and Grimes if it comes down to it. So uh, I definitely think that he is a good play. Um, also on the Knicks side, you're going to get, and these, these are kind of annoying guys to play, but you have R.J. Barrett, Jalen Brunson, but they don't even look that great. You know, um, I'm actually not going to move them up into top play status. So Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett, uh, Julius Randle. I actually have Randle below Barrett. So I guess none of them look like that great plays. I guess we're going to stick with the value for now. Uh, quickly and Quentin Grimes. And then on the OKC side, uh, I would be remiss to, you know, to not point out that, that, you know, the Knicks have become that team that you want to target uh, in, in DFS, meaning play guys against them where the Knicks used to have this reputation for being a slow, you know, defensive team. They, they really haven't uh, done a good job with that this year. So everybody kind of gets a bump up um, and you have Shea Gilgis Alexander, who has been just a cult, just a complete stud against pretty much everybody um except i guess for his last game that's just kind of nuts right who would have thought this 
Well, he's six for 18. That's what happens sometimes. But every other game, I mean, look at 60, 60, 60. This matchup, this is a very, very some extremely strong play. So there, there's, there is a, a SGA. Probably, I have him rated as the top overall play on the slate, at least at this early look. Um, in addition to that, you have other plays, some value and some kind of a uh, little higher. Uh, we got to clear the decks here because there are, there are a lot of plays here. Let's get rid of Jalen Smith for now. Let's get rid of Gar. Let's even get rid of Tatum just so we can get all these guys in here. We have Jerome Robinson Earl at 3,600, who's rating to be really strong. You have Jalen Williams at 4,300, looking to be really strong. Then you even have Kenrick Williams. Thirty-two hundred could be a good value play, and then you know you can pay up a little bit for Josh Giddy, who who's you know he obviously has a really really big ceiling. So uh, all of these guys, Jalen Williams, Kenrick Williams, Jerome Robinson, Earl, Shea, and Giddy. If you want to get cutesy, maybe you don't play Shea and Giddy in the same lineup, um, but. All of this is very, very playable, and this whole game is very uh, game stackable. Now, with that said, I mentioned that the the Randall and, and uh, Barrett or whatever, they don't look that great individually, but if you are going to stack the game, you want to give these guys a little bit of a bump. So I would say that Randall becomes a little bit better play than maybe his projection would indicate, uh, as would maybe R.J. Barrett. So... Um, Keep that in mind. Uh, but this game is very, very stackable. You could stack multiple pieces of this and then put studs in as well, uh, surrounding it. Very, very key game to get right. And, um, you know, uh, we'll, 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 get to, we'll get to more of that closer to lock. And you have this neat little gap between 7 o'clock and the 8 o'clock games where, you know, if you get some surprise starters and the projections really change, you, you're not locked into your OKC exposure yet. Um, so you could see if how, you know, if you don't play, say, Cleveland and Atlanta and 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 you see already the guys are just going freaking berserk that you don't have, then, you know, you might want to, you know, play the lower owned of the OKC Knicks game. You know, you don't, maybe you won't want to play Quentin Grimes, who's going to be really popular, I believe, uh, if he starts, clearly. Um, and Shea is going to be popular and, and all this stuff, so. Uh, Jalen Williams right now I have is the highest owned of these OKC guys at 22%. Actually, that's not true. I have Giddy at 25 as well. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be a, a key game. All right, Golden State against New Orleans. Uh, speaking of studs that you might be able to get in, um, well, Mr. Curry is one of them. Uh, he's perfectly reasonable the way he's playing now at 10-4, uh, 10-6 rather. Certainly, being on a back-to-back -back isn't the greatest, but you know, uh, still is 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 really just putting up a lot of good numbers this year. He's rebounding it better, and he's shooting it better, and he's shooting it more. I mean, he's he's become a DFS stud again. I think so. Uh, Curry, very very reasonable here. Anybody else from Golden State? I think I'm not going to get to. Actually, that's not true. So so right. So you have Clay Thompson, who is probably going to be out, right? Uh, well, I don't know, probably going to be out, but I have Jordan Poole projected as if uh, Clay Thompson is going to be out. Uh, I have him really showing up as a really strong play. Um, so can you get him at forward? No. Let, let's replace Shea for now. So we just – Take a look at what Poole looks like. So I think this is a good place. So Jordan Poole and Curry from the Golden State, State side. State side. And then from the New Orleans side, I really don't have much. Uh, with, with Zion back, I think everybody is very fully and fairly priced. Probably not get to get, get to anybody. So just again, to, to re review, uh, from the Golden State side, I do like both Curry and Jordan Poole. Um, okay, three games left to go. And they're all pretty interesting. So Portland, Milwaukee, um, this one is really interesting to me because when I first saw that, um, what's his name, uh, Dame Lillard was going to be out, 
I was expecting all these Portland guys to pop really, really hard. And strangely, at least at this early juncture, they're just not. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have to take another look at that because, like, if if Shaden Shaden Sharp gets the start, and he's thirty eight hundred, I mean, it's kind of tough to ignore. And Anthony Simons with with Curry out, I'm Curry out with with Dame out, seventy four hundred seems pretty reasonable for him as well. And then also uh, Nurkic who is only 6,800, seems as though he would be a good play. Josh Hart at 6,500 seems he would be a good play. Um, but like right now, my projections are just not holding up. I mean, I'm seeing a 19-point projection on Shaden Sharp, and, and Winslow doesn't even look that great, and Simons looks pretty poor. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to take another look at this. I, I, I literally don't believe this. We'll, we'll have to take a look a little bit later, but I, I imagine that Anthony Simon is going to end up being a good play. But we'll, we'll see. Um, Milwaukee, uh, I think Giannis at 12 4. I have him rated as my fourth overall play on the slate. I had Shea, Shea one, Curry two, Tatum three, Giannis four. Um, now, you do get Giannis at 6% ownership. Um, at least right now, and depending on what other value opens up. I mean, like if Grimes is for real going to be like free square at 3K, then it, it number one, it will make Giannis a better play and it will make him higher own. Um, but uh, aside from that, I don't think I'm getting much else from Milwaukee. Let's take a look. Um, no, not really. So watch for the updated projections on Portland. Right now, nobody looks good, but I just find it hard to believe they won't. At Miami, Minnesota, this is a mess. Uh, but there's something I want to I want to talk about with respect to Miami. Uh, he was out for here. I don't I don't I don't know who's playing. Uh, you're gonna have to wait. And fortunately, it's an eight o'clock game, which is a long run. All the others are. So, as listen, as long as you don't go over over bananas on a seven o'clock game. You'll have time to adjust to whatever Miami says. And, and the other day they played with seven people. And here's kind of an observation. I'll bring this up again in, in the live chat, just so everybody really understands it. You know, I, I had a, a, a an extremely poor take um, last time Miami played. It's kind of like low key, terrible take. If you want to know the truth, I don't know, just take whatever I just wrong. When they were going to play seven guys, I, I really believed that what they were going to do was either not punt the game necessarily, but they were just going to play everybody as equal as possible. And and there's there no way that Kyle Lowry at his age was going to play like 48 minutes. And I was just dead wrong. You know what they did? They had they treated it almost like an AAU basketball game or, or like a, a travel basketball game. They brought seven guys, and the five starters played pretty much the whole game. The two subs – went in for like 19 and 22 minutes and all the other guys played like the whole game. So it's something to keep an eye on, you know, like usually when you have a team that it was really, really thin, we don't care too much about who quote unquote starts. But what we've learned from that last game is that, you know, Miami is the team that's going to play who they start. And, and if you, if there's a guy that's showing up in the value rankings for you, you know, presuming he's starting, and then he moves to the to, to the bench in a situation like that, where some normally we could say, well, you know, it's actually probably better if he's on the bench; he won't be as highly owned. But not not apparently not with Spolstra. With Spolstra's in the situation. He just showed that he's just going to play the five starters as much more than the two bench guys. So have to keep an eye on that for tonight if they actually end up being really really shorthanded again. Um, and it's completely used to speculate on who looks good right now. And so we know whether Lowry's playing, whether Vincent's playing, whether all the stuff and who's starting all that. So we'll, we'll get back to that later. Um, and on the Minnesota side, uh, I guess Cat looks all well and good. I guess Gobert looks all well and good. I guess both those are okay. Um, Anybody else? No, probably not. So Gobert and Cat 
on the uh, Minnesota side. Maybe a little Angelo Russell, D'Angelo Russell. Sorry about that. Maybe we'll get, he's only 6,100. And then on the Miami side, we just, we just have to wait and see. And then the, the big Island game at the end, uh, which unfortunately you can't sleep on, uh, so to speak, uh, Utah LAC. I'm not really getting the too much on the LAC side, but, but the Utah side is really, it's a big deal because Mike Conley was out, is out. So it really depends if you want to know the truth on who starts, I believe, for Utah. Yeah, Taylor and Horton Tucker come in for him in, his la in the last game and play. Let me see what his actual minutes were. Um, he played 32 minutes, right? So if he starts and is getting, you know, starters minutes in, in, in place of Conley, um, he's going to show up to be a really, really strong play and probably 35% owned. On the other hand, if that's starting the spot, will go to Colin Sexton. I think the same thing will happen. He'll end up being really he'll end up being a really, really strong play. And he'll be he's gonna be popular. So the, the the I think both of them are going to be somewhat efficient. But the thing is that the game is not till 10 30. But what makes it sort of easy is that especially the shooting guard position, I mean you could play either of them. You know what I mean? You you could play Sexton for now at the shooting guard. And then if in fact Horton Tucker is starting, you could swap for him and, you know, you have 700 to say by doing that. Um, so you don't really have to make that decision. And it's really not important. Who's, I, I really do think in this case that you probably want to play who's starting. So just kind of watch for that. And I don't think it's that. I don't think it's fancy play syndrome. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't think you want to have fancy play syndrome there. Just take whoever's starting and just kind of be done with it. Not be done with it, but and be happy with it. Uh, remember, Utah is a really, really high-paced team nowadays. They're going to put up fantasy points. And you want to be on the court. Uh, Kelly Olenek, 4,900. It's another decent play for the Utah side. What else from Utah? Um, not too much. So... Taylor Horton Tucker or Sexton look to be very, very strong. And again, if you want to play, who else did I say? Kelly Olynyk can do that. And there's not so much on the Clippers side. Uh, Paul George is questionable. So, yeah. Um, if he's out, then we'll have to deal with that. But if he's out, who would really show up? Yeah, like all these guys. Like Norm Powell would show up as a huge play, I think. I don't know how many minutes Kawhi can play to be relevant anymore. John Wall. So if Paul George is out, I mean, there'll be guys you could play, um, but it's not worth speculating on right now. So, again, let me just kind of like go through. Um, there, there are a couple, at least like right now, that look like really, really good plays. Like the either Taylor Horton Tucker or or Sexton, as I just mentioned. Uh, there are Miami guys that could show up as good plays. I mean, Jovic and others, right? The, all those Oklahoma City value guys, uh, Jalen Williams, George, uh, J Jeremiah Robinson Earl, Kenrich Williams, those are all good value plays. Not to mention spend-ups of Shea in that game and and the Nick side, Grimes, and or um, what's his name, uh, quickly uh, stack that game up a little bit. Then the Golden State, I mean, especially if plays out, you could play Curry and Poole. So there, there are definitely some good plays today. Um, but it, it's like anything else, it is going to require some, some waiting and to see how the injury news kind of pans out. Uh, so I encourage everybody to join me at uh, six-ish for, you know, the live show where we can, We'll roll the late changes and actually do some lineup builds. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.